Booster 15 has just made Starbase even more thrilling with the most powerful static fire test to date. With rapid hardware progress, Flight 8 and the upcoming missions are set to launch in quick succession. Meanwhile, Rocket Lab has taken its first major steps of the new year, making strides in its ambitious plans. And over at NASA, an exciting breakthrough. NASA and General Atomics have successfully completed a critical test of their nuclear propulsion system, a game-changing technology for future Moon and Mars missions. Let's kick off the new week by diving into all this on today's episode of Great SpaceX. The road to Starship's eighth flight and the second of this year is wide open. Determination is at an all-time high as SpaceX pushes forward to address the unfinished objectives of the previous mission. A critical milestone in that preparation has just been reached. Booster 15 has successfully completed its static fire test. Following the booster's rollout to the launch pad, it was promptly lifted onto the orbital launch mount by the afternoon of the 8th, Road closures and key logistical movements signaled that a major test was imminent. The removal of the booster transport stand and OLM work platforms further hinted that this would be a particularly powerful static fire. By the morning of the 9th, venting from the OLM, the tower, and the tank farm indicated that the test sequence was underway. Propellant loading followed, with liquid oxygen filling the tanks completely and liquid methane reaching about a third capacity. Then, at precisely 9.51 a.m. Central, the test ignited into action. As expected, the water deluge system kicked in releasing approximately 350,000 gallons of water to absorb the heat and pressure from the engines. And then, the moment arrived. 33 Raptor engines roared to life, unleashing over 7,000 tons of thrust. The burn lasted for approximately 8 seconds, making it one of the most powerful and sustained static fires ever conducted at Starbase. The impact of the test was dramatic. Compared to previous booster tests, the dust and debris cloud rose higher and more forcefully, closely resembling an actual launch. This suggests that SpaceX is now testing under near-flight conditions, an essential step in refining vehicle performance and validating the resilience of the launch system. Post-test observations confirmed no apparent issues with either Booster 15 or the ground infrastructure, reinforcing the success of the static fire. Shortly after, SpaceX shared spectacular imagery of the event, captioned, Full Duration Static Fire Test of Super Heavy. Elon Musk himself reshared one of the images, emphasizing the name, Starship Super Heavy Booster. With this test complete, the next phase of preparation is already underway. The launch tower's chopsticks were raised and lowered, followed by the retraction of the ship quick disconnect arm. The booster transport stand is expected to arrive shortly, ready to move B-15 back to the production site for a thorough post-test inspection. This will include assessments of the engines, fuel systems, and overall structural integrity. In the coming weeks, B-15 will be outfitted with its hot staging ring and flight termination system. Once all systems are in place, it'll return to the launch pad to await integration with Ship 34. Speaking of Ship 34, preparations for its next steps are also in motion. On the morning of February 9th, the ship test stand was transported to the production site. This is a key precursor to S-34's upcoming movement, which is scheduled for February 10th, with road closures set between 12 noon to 4 p.m., and again from 9 p.m. to midnight. The ship will first wait for Test Tank 16 to return before heading to the Massey test site. Like B-15, Ship 34 will undergo its own static fire test after spending time in Megabay 2 for engine installation. This upcoming test is crucial as SpaceX aims to address and improve upon past performance, particularly the anomalies encountered with Ship 33 during Flight 7. The ship's engines will play a vital role in several mission-critical tasks, achieving orbit, supporting payload deployment, conducting a relight test in space, and eventually assisting with controlled navigation and landing. If all goes according to plan, Ship 34's static fire test will take place within the week without requiring a scheduled road closure. Once completed, the vehicle will return to the production site for final checkouts and outfitting. This includes installation of the PEZ Dispenser Payload Deployment System, simulated payloads, and the Flight Termination System. From there, it'll be transported to the launch pad for wet dress rehearsal testing alongside B-15. Meanwhile, another key element in SpaceX's ongoing testing campaign is Test Tank 16. 
After arriving at the Massey test site on the 4th of February, it has already undergone a series of evaluations, some of which were unexpected and highly intriguing. One particularly notable experiment involved a chopstick simulator system. This test setup, never seen before, appears to replicate the mechanisms of the actual launch tower's chopsticks. It suggests that SpaceX is actively developing catch and reuse techniques for future flights. The objectives of these tests likely include compatibility verification, pressure testing, and structural assessments. If successful, this research could pave the way for a two-stage recovery attempt as early as Flight 9 with Ship 35. Alternatively, it may indicate upgrades to the Super Heavy Version 2 catching system. There's even the possibility that the findings will contribute to refinements on Chopsticks Tower B, further enhancing Starbase's launch infrastructure. Once Test Tank 16 completes its test campaign, it'll depart the Massey test site to make room for Ship 34's arrival and prepare for its next assignment. Are you ready for what's next? Let me know by responding I'm ready in the comment section down below. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to our channel to stay up to date with SpaceX's incredible journey toward the future of spaceflight. As SpaceX continues its rapid advancements at Starbase, other players in the industry are also making strides. Rocket Lab has officially kicked off its 2025 launch campaign with a successful mission, marking an important milestone for the company. After a brief delay to avoid interfering with other vehicles, Rocket Lab launched an Electron rocket at 3.43 a.m. Eastern on the 9th of February, carrying five Internet of Things satellites for Kinesis into orbit. Just over an hour after launch, the satellites were successfully deployed, advancing the developments of Kinesis' growing satellite constellation. This mission is the fourth of five that Rocket Lab is executing for the French company, aimed at creating a constellation of 25 nano-satellites in low Earth orbit. The final launch in the series is expected to take place within the next few months, allowing the entire system to become fully operational by mid-year. According to Rocket Lab's mission description, the Kines network will enable global connectivity by allowing any object anywhere in the world to transmit useful data to users in near real time. The system's applications range from tracking and monitoring to alerting users of critical updates offering a decision-making tool that optimizes activities while reducing risks. For Rocket Lab, this launch represents an exciting start to what is shaping up to be a busy year. Throughout 2024, the company launched 16 missions, including 14 successful orbital launches, securing its position as the second most active launch provider in the United States, second only to SpaceX. This year, Rocket Lab is looking to ramp up its launch cadence even further. Additionally, the company is making strategic moves to compete in the small satellite launch sector offering services similar to SpaceX's increasingly popular rideshare program, which has attracted a growing number of customers looking for cost-effective access to space. However, despite its promising trajectory, Rocket Lab still faces significant challenges. While this month's successful launch is a positive step, the company did not conduct any launches in January, which could create time pressure if it aims to increase its launch frequency in 2025. Additionally, Rocket Lab must focus on advancing its next-generation rocket, Neutron, which is expected to make its debut in the coming months. NASA and General Atomics have recently achieved a significant milestone in the development of Nuclear Thermal Propulsion Technology, or NTP for short, a breakthrough that could revolutionize deep space exploration. As the push for Moon and Mars exploration intensifies, both the U.S. government and private space companies are seeking faster and more efficient ways to travel through space. Given the vast distances involved, nuclear propulsion has long been considered a game-changing technology that could significantly shorten travel times to Mars and beyond. Earlier this month, General Atomics Electromagnetic Systems, or GAEMS, in collaboration with NASA, conducted a critical test of the NTP reactor, evaluating the durability of the system's fuel under the extreme conditions of space. This test represents a significant step forward in demonstrating the feasibility of nuclear propulsion for deep space missions. The results of the test appear to be highly encouraging. General Atomics President Scott Forty stated, We're very encouraged by the positive test results proving the fuel can survive these operational conditions, moving us closer to realizing the potential of safe, reliable nuclear thermal propulsion for cislunar and deep space missions. 
During the experiment, General Atomics subjected fuel samples to six thermal cycles using hydrogen, rapidly increasing temperatures to an astonishing 4,220 degrees Fahrenheit or 2,326 degrees Celsius. This extreme heat simulates the conditions the nuclear fuel would experience in space, ensuring it can withstand the intense demands of propulsion. In addition, the company conducted further testing on protective features, gathering valuable data to enhance the durability and efficiency of future nuclear propulsion systems. Christina Beck, VP of General Atomics Nuclear Technologies and Materials, emphasized the significance of this achievement, stating, To the best of our knowledge, we are the first company to use the Compact Fuel Element Environmental Test, or CFEET, facility at NASA MSFC, or Marshall Space Flight Center, to successfully test and demonstrate the survivability of fuel after thermal cycling in hydrogen representative temperatures and ramp rates. With these promising results, the NTP system is proving to be two to three times more efficient than conventional chemical rocket engines. If progress continues at this pace, NASA aims to conduct an in-space demonstration of nuclear thermal propulsion by 2027. What do you think of this breakthrough? Do you believe nuclear propulsion is the key to reaching Mars and beyond? Let us know in the comments section down below and stay tuned for more exciting updates on the future of space exploration. This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX, and until next time, stay curious, stay inspired, and always keep looking up.